If you believe that, come on, clap your hands. The name of the Lord. The righteous one is running, they are saying. The righteous one is they are saying. There's a place I can go. I can go to the rock. That rock is Jesus. He will protect you. He will never leave you. The rock is running, they are saying. There's a place we can hide. He that dwelleth in the secret place. In the secret place of the most high. He writes. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers or rulers or authorities. All things were created by him and for him. He is before all things, and in him all things hold together. And he is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning and the firstborn from among the dead, so that in everything he might have the supremacy. For God was pleased to have all his fullness dwell in him, and through him to reconcile to himself all things, whether things on earth, things in heaven, by making peace through his blood shed on the cross. And all of the church said, and my subject is holding things together. Paul wanted to make it clear that as the Son of God, Jesus was truly God, the Creator God. Yes, as a human being, he was born of the Virgin Mary, but as the Son of God, the Heavenly Father was his Father. Don't ask me to explain. I can't do that. I can only tell you what the Bible says. But in Colossians 1 and 15, he says that Christ is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn over all creation. As the image of the invisible God, Jesus is the exact representation of God. And I want you to know, as the firstborn, not of creation, as some uh, denominations teach, well, I'll say it, the Jehovah Witness, he is not the firstborn of creation. He is the firstborn over all creation. Not first created, but instead the preeminent one, the supreme one in creation. The writer of Hebrews puts it this way in Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2. He says, in the past, God spoke to our forefathers through the prophets at many times and in various ways. But in these last days in which we're living now before Jesus comes again, he has spoken to us by his son, whom he appointed heir over of all things and through whom he made the universe. Wow. You see, when the universe began, Jesus already existed. Oh, boy. In John chapter 1, John says in verse 1, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word, the Logos, was God. He was with God, you said it, in the beginning. Then he goes on and says, that Jesus created all things 
Through him, all things were made. Without him, nothing was made that has been made. Yes, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. But Jesus was in the beginning before the beginning. Work with that one. That's why he's the Alpha and the Omega. The beginning and the end. So this stuff is mind-boggling stuff, but as we now enter the holiday season, this is what it's about, mind-boggling stuff. We're going to be talking about God taking on flesh in the form of Jesus Christ through a human being, Mary, and yet he's still God. Oh. You see, Jesus is the creator entering his own creation to save his own creation, man. God takes on flesh, enters in creation to save those whom he created, mankind, who have fallen into sin. What manner of love is that? Yes, Jesus loves me. He would do that to save you and you and you and you in the balcony and little old me. Jesus became what was necessary to save fallen humanity. Just like he spoke the universe into existence, he's still speaking into the hearts of human beings today. People who are dead in trespasses and sin. People who need to be recreated in Christ to be right with God. And as I preach this message, I hope I'm talking to someone and saying to you, I hope and pray that God is speaking to you today. Because what good is it for God to speak and you don't hear it? What good is it for God to speak and you put it to the side and throw it off as if it means nothing? It was critical that the church at Coloss understand that they were putting their faith in God, not just a man. When they trusted in Jesus, Paul tells the church at Coloss that not only is Jesus the creator of all things, he is also the sustainer of all things in verse 16 and 17. All things created, heaven, earth, visible, invisible, thrones, powers, rulers, authorities, all things created by him, for him, he is before all. All things in him, all things hold together. That's Jesus Christ as the sustainer. You see, ladies and gentlemen, it's one thing to create something. It's another thing to take care of what you created. From the largest constellation to the smallest molecules, Jesus holds them all together. From the planets all the way down to protons and neutrons and things that are invisible to the naked eye and take incredibly powerful microscopes to even see them, and we know they're real. Jesus holds all of this together. What you can see and what you can't see. This person by the name of Donald B. DeYoung in his book, The Design in Nature, The Anthropic Principle. It's a November 1985 article. He says, now listen how delicate this is. He said, a change in the rate of the earth rotations around the sun or on its axis would be catastrophic. The earth would become either too hot or too cold to support life. If the moon were much nearer to the earth, huge tides would inundate the continents. A change in the composition of the gases that make up our atmosphere would also be fatal to life. A slight change in the mass of the proton would result in the dissolution of hydrogen atoms. 
that would result in the destruction of the universe because hydrogen is its dominant element. Now, while you're worrying about paying your bills and whether you're going to be foreclosed and you need a job, God is holding together molecules and protons and neutrons. He's doing the stuff that's essential to life. And when was the last time you thanked God for the mo molecules and the protons and the neutrons doing their thing right? What an awesome God we serve. Someone said he keeps on doing great thing for me. And if you want the real truth, not only is God holding the universe together, he's holding you together. Right here, right now, right today. Sometimes we do not realize the stress, the anxiety, the pressure that's on the inside of us, just waiting to explode. This is the reason you can do something small to a person and they go off because they was already messed up. They just weren't sure. It just took one more little thing, and they just like, that's it. I've lost it. I'm going postal. <laughs> you just lose it. It takes a lot, ladies and gentlemen, to handle stress and pressure. I wish I had a witness. Because you're feeling it down on the inside. But if you respond in bad ways to it, you know, you can either get locked up, or put in places <laughs> where you can't leave. Because they say you ain't in your right mind. Anybody know a little bit about pressure? Oh, Lord Jesus. You see, ladies and gentlemen, I brought with me a, a grenade. And I mean, this is, now see, y'all all know it can't be one because there would have been a mass ex. But I want you to know you know, I didn't go outside and test this thing, by the way. But I, but I figured because it cost $13.95, ain't nobody messed up. So I hope this ain't my final sermon. Because <laughs> it is actually heavy as a real grenade. But ladies and gentlemen, think about it. Inside of this is incredible explosive power. And the only thing that's keeping all that power contained is this little old bitty pen. If you take the pen out, I'm going to get it away from me over here. And some of y'all were really scared. I'm watching you move. I mean, it's, it's, it's amazing that just this little bitty pen is holding all that power for illustration. Say, let me put the pen back in. Uh-huh, there we go. All right, it ain't working for me. Once out. Ah, oh, there it is. All right. Want to make some points here. Tell your neighbor this. Say, God is keeping me from exploding. See, if you don't have God in your life, you got to ask your neighbor, say, neighbor, neighbor. If, you if you don't have God, what's holding you together? Holding you together? Oh, hallelujah. hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, this is whole power. This little simple pen holds all this power. And we got an awesome God. That's why when she sang that song, she said, you don't know my story. Every person in here got a story. Every person in here can tell you something if they know God about some reason they shouldn't be here. But the goodness and grace of God was on their life and they're here. Someone can tell you that when they thought they was going to lose their mind. All of a sudden, God said, 
boom, and stuck that pen in there so you wouldn't lose your mind. Do I have some people know about a God that can keep you? What an awesome God. And when you understand who's holding you together, it can keep you from falling apart. I magnify the Lord. See, when life gets hard, there's a tendency for us to fall apart. And you know, God is definitely some, in my view, I've been saved 34 years, so I got some liberties now. In my view, sometimes God is a comedian. Have you ever been in stuff and you just felt like you couldn't take no more and you, you threatened God? <laughs> oh, y'all have done it. I'm telling you now, but not one thing more happen. <laughs> I can't take nothing else. You hear me now, don't you? <laughs> they, they, they say you omnis omniscient. <laughs> you know all things. You, you omnipresent. You feel all time and space. You, you, you hear me? I ain't playing. <laughs> Next thing you know, phone rings. Ring! Somebody else sick. Somebody else died. Something else didn't happen. And then you say, I told you. So you just start screaming and hollering all over the house. I've done it. <laughs> like a kid. You just start thinking you lose it. And what God is saying to you and me is this. See, you only think you know what you can take. But your God who knows you better than yourself. Your God who knew you before you were in your mama's womb. Your God who knew you before your mama and daddy were flirting with one another. Your God knows you so well, he knows just how much you can take. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 10 and 13, there has no test taken you, but such as is common to man. But God is faithful. He will not allow you to be tested above your ability to endure. Do you not understand what that means? That means there are some things in life that we could not endure. Not what we think, but what we couldn't handle. And what God is saying is, that thing, that you don't even necessarily know what it is, that thing I am not going to let happen because it would be more than your ability to endure. Then what will you do, God? I will make the way of escape so that you can be able to handle it. What an awesome God. Is he keeping you together? Is he keeping you together, Brother John? Brenda, our God is awesome. Even when everything is falling apart all around you, God keeps holding everything together. I'm reminded of a tremendous story in Acts, the 27th chapter. Acts is the historical book of the New Testament. If you come to Bible class, you would know that gives us the beginning of the church on the day of Pentecost, and we see Jesus' last words to his apostles, is you are to be witness unto me. I want you to, first of all, witness at home in Jerusalem. Then I want you to go to Judea and Samaria and unto the othermost part of the world. And at that time, look how awesome God is. At that time, the greatest persecutor in the church is a man by the name of Saul. He's killing Christians. He's putting Christians in jail. And God then saves this man. He's got one program, but God's got another program. Well, which program I'm going to win? Well, there can't be nothing but one sovereign. So somebody said, but I thought we had free will. Well, after Jesus knocked him off his horse on the Damascus road, he freely wanted to do what God told him to do. You see, God knows how to knock you down. And the next thing you know, you're saying, Lord... What will you have me to do? This same man now becomes the one who carries the gospel to the uttermost part of the earth. Because to Jerusalem, Judea, and all of those places, primarily Jews, that was Peter's job. To the Samaritans, to the uttermost part of the earth, that's Paul's job. Because God changed his name from Saul to Paul. And God wants to change somebody that's in here today. 
There's another future and another destiny that awaits you when you surrender your life to Jesus Christ. The Bible says this man at the end of Acts, it's only 28 chapters, but in the 27th chapter, he's being taken as a prisoner to Rome to stand before Caesar. He is now God's instrument to fulfill Jesus' mission statement of going into all the earth with the gospel. Rome in that day was the most powerful nation in the world. It was so vast, its kingdom and its rule, that the old saying went like this. All roads lead to Rome. They were selling to Rome during hurricane season. Even though the apostle Paul said it was too dangerous, but he was overruled. I, I know how that feels. You know, don't nobody listen to the preacher. Paul told him, say, y'all, I, I, look, don't go nowhere. It's, it's going to be jacked up. But the ship's pilot and the ship's owner looked out and said, man, the weather looks great. We going. All right, do what you want to do. That's what I say, too. At first, everything is favorable as they sail. Then the ship gets caught in a terrible hurricane on the level of Hurricane Sand. that has ravished the East Coast and New York and New Jersey. Powerful winds. I mean, just being caught in stuff like that is unimaginable to us. And then after Sandy, then the Nor'easter has hit wind, snow, sleet. Ladies and gentlemen, this stuff is catastrophic stuff. This is stuff that blows whole towns away. Big old cranes hanging out or dangling weighing hundreds and thousands of pounds. What kind of power is unleashed when hurricanes come? You see ladies and gentlemen, the men on the ship in the storm, they were in it for many days. No food, no water. The Bible says in the 27th chapter, of Acts verses 20 to 25 tells us what happened. It said, when neither sun nor stars in many days appeared and no small tempest lay on us, no, all hope that we should be saved was then taken away. After long abstinence, Paul stood forth in the midst of them. Now, know what Paul says. He says, sirs, should have listened to me, man. <laughs> and not have loose from Crete and to have gained this harm and loss. And now I exhort you, do what? Be of good cheer. For there shall be no loss of any man's life among you, but of the ship. For there stood by me this night the angel of God, whose I am and who I serve. He said, fear not, Paul. Thou must be brought before Caesar. And lo, God has given thee all them that sail with thee. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God, that it shall be even as it was told me. I believe God is the key. Remember now, the hurricane is going all around them. Everything is falling apart. They haven't eaten. There's no food. There's no water. The storm is raging. And in the midst of, of all of that calamity, Paul is saying, stop looking at what you can see and put your faith and trust in God. He said, I believe God. When everything is falling apart in your life, you got to believe God that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You got to believe God that you are more than a conqueror through him that love. You got to believe God that nothing is too hard for him. You got to believe God that he's able to supply all of your need according to his riches in glory. For we walk by faith and not by sight. So tell your neighbor, you don't know what they're going through, but tell them what you believe. I believe God. 
And then, ladies and gentlemen, you know, some people, I don't care where you are, even at sea, you always got somebody slick. So in verse number 31, you had these soldiers, and what they were trying to do was get off the ship. And they're going to let the light boat down. They were going to pretend they were going to lower some anchor. Paul said to them in verse 31, unless these men stay with the ship, you can't be saved. You, if you want to be saved, you got to stay on board. If you want to make it to the end, you got to stay on board. Some of you have been walking with God too long to jump off ship now. He's been with you through ups and downs. He's been with you through thick and thin. He's been with you through trials and triumph and tears and sorrow. You can't get off now. You've been walking with him too long. Tell your neighbor, stay on board. <laughs> and then the Bible says in verse 35, they had a little food left. Paul told all 276 men, he said, eat a little something. After he said this, he took some bread and gave thanks to God in front of them all. He broke it and began to eat. Thanksgiving is coming in a couple of weeks. One of the biggest testimonies you can ever show for your God is when everything seems to be going wrong and nothing seems to be going right. That in front of your family who are lost and your family who don't know Jesus and your friends, when you take the little that you still have and you proclaim that God is good, even though you got a little, you got to be able to say, my God is good all the time. So even though I got a little, I'm going to thank God for it. Sometimes the reason you don't get a lot because you haven't learned how to thank God first for the little. Because little becomes much in the master's hand. We hope that you have been blessed by this broadcast. And we look forward to you worshiping with us on Sunday mornings at our 1015 a.m. service. Also, we invite you to join us for our Tuesday night Bible study at 7.30 p.m. And lunch on the Word on Wednesdays at noon. Please visit us online at www.VictoryApostolicChurch.org. If this particular sermon blessed you and you would like to order the full broadcast worship service, please send a check or money order to Victory Apostolic Church. We would gladly accept your credit card purchase Monday through Friday between the hours of 9 a.m. and 4.30 p.m. Please include the broadcast title and number along with your selected choice of media, CD or DVD 